I actually joined WSU about eight years ago. And besides doing uh, research, teaching students, one of the coolest parts of my job is to be able to work with farmers directly and actually solve some of their real world problems. And while we were doing that, we actually stumbled on upon uh, addressing two of the major issues that really uh, uh, bother our planet right now, that we are concerned about on our planet. One is the availability of uh, clean drinking water and also the increasing levels of carbon dioxide. So what were these problems that we were solving that could actually help us address such planetary problems, planetary issues? So when a farmer wants to plant an orchard, they actually put their money down and wait for the trees to arrive three to five years later. Just for your information, most of these trees that you see here on the stage, actually these are from my program, uh, they don't grow on their own roots. They use something called as rootstocks. Rootstocks are genetically uh, different from the variety that is on the top. So a nursery actually multiplies these in the ground, and after they have attained a certain height and caliber, uh, a new variety is grafted on top of that, and then the tree is grown for an additional year before it is dug out of the soil, all the soil removed, and the roots are bare, and that those trees are actually stored in moss in a cold storage over the winter to be shipped to the farmers next spring for planting. And when the farmer receives these trees, about 10 to 40% of those trees die after planting. And of the ones that do survive, 10 to 20% are not what they had ordered. So there are mix-ups. In fact, over the last 10 years, there have been several such mix-ups where the rootstocks, entire set of rootstocks, was not what the order was. So this has cost uh, millions of dollars worth of loss to the industry. It's amazing that this keeps on happening over and over again. So this weather-induced damage to the plant material when it's being grown in the soil and losses because of that, as well as this human error in mix-ups, is a commonly accepted norm in this tree fruit industry for over 100 years since the establishment of this industry. So we developed a solution to this problem. We developed a soil-free multiplication system. It's called tissue culture. Tissue culture is basically a process of growing and multiplying plants in these clean containers uh, where it is supported by a nutrient material, uh, agar gel-based material, that uh, contains everything that the plant needs to grow, and we just provide some artificial light from the top. So with this process, what we can do is we can multiply plants three to five-fold within five weeks. Actually, it enables us to uh, make 250,000 plants from one starting plant in one year. Now compare that to what happens in the soil. You can get maximum 10 to 20 plants in one year. 250,000, 10 or 20. What a huge difference in those two things. So we didn't stop at that. We, of course, can make a lot of plant material, but we actually combined that with greenhouse processes where we could actually compress three four years worth of growth in about one year. The result is a robust, very big tree. In fact, this is an apple tree from my greenhouse. This is in second year of its bloom, uh, started from seed. And any one of you who has grown any, plant, any trees from seed, you know this can take up to 10 years. Uh, there are some more apple and pear trees on the side. So these are all grown in our greenhouses. In addition to this, uh, my lab has also uh, sequenced and released the genomes, the DNA encyclopedia, for several of the uh, fruit and nut species. Now, we can utilize all that information in genetically uh, testing and making sure that each of the million plants we produced through this tissue culture process is actually guaranteed to be true to type, thereby providing complete peace of mind to the farmer who's planting those. So by cutting down the time, we actually provide faster return of investment to the farmer, and the, then we guarantee the identity. They don't have to replant. There's a huge amount of savings and inputs. And because these trees are growing in uh, such uh, containers, once they are planted, they are certain to thrive and produce fruit instantly. So this is such an efficient process that we were actually prompted by several people to quantify what other benefits accrue 
from our technologies. So we found out that for every tree produced in this process, we are able to save up to 50 to 80 gallons of clean water for every tree produced through this method. So for every million trees we make with this method, we can uh, save up to 80 million gallons of clean water, which by the way, is enough, or it basically suffices to feed the needs of the entire California Bay Area for one year. And most of these tissue culture establishments can make up to 10 million plants a year. So you can imagine how we can have a big impact with this process. In addition, every million additional trees can sequester carbon dioxide released, carbon dioxide released by 100,000 cars. And since we are doing this multiplication in these clean boxes in the initial stages, we don't use pesticides, fungicides, insecticides. We are reducing the impact on the soil at the same time, but we are also reducing the use of these chemicals. So I mentioned we've developed these protocols for some of the tree fruits, but this technology can be adaptable to forestry, to citrus, nuts, name these. In fact, uh, there are, this technology can easily be also deployed today for several of the reforestation projects which are being implemented to reclaim uh, our lands that have been destroyed or forests that have been destroyed due to uh, logging purposes or, or fire. In case of disease, if we can find a plant or a variety, uh, you know you're probably familiar with these images where a lot of these forest trees are being inflicted by disease. We can find uh, plants that are resistant, we can quickly multiply and deploy and replace these bad ones. So we can really cover, uh, achieve these projects very quickly. So these reforestation projects, the goal is to plant several million trees over the next 20 years. Why are we waiting? We can do it today. We can start today with these technologies, such as the power of these technologies. So just a simple methodology of multiplying trees can bring about a transformation. However, to bring this transformation, this technology needs to reach the market. And in fact, I did something which was suggested to me by two of my undergraduate students. Again, great uh, place to work at a university, right? You have access to smarter people than you. Undergraduates suggested very nice things. This one of them, Alec Alejandro uh, Baeza, a farmer from Mexico. He actually came here as an undergrad and he worked with these technologies and suggested, Amit, you should commercialize this. It will be real great, greatly beneficial to the farmers. And then second, a pre-med undergraduate student, Brittany Urso, whose father uh, used to work for Innovate Washington, uh, which uh, supports startups in Washington State, also suggested you should do that. But I was trained as an academician. I had no idea how to start startups. <laughs> uh, the only uh, other formal organization or formal outfit that I ever made, or I had some experience doing, was actually setting up a garage band back in the day. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All right. So, but the cool part for this adventure was that I already had a great set of team members to work with. I already had my graduate students who had been working with farmers. And uh, I sort of did the unthinkable. We came together and we basically set up the first WSU spinoff that actually focuses on plants. Uh, th th this is, uh, Kathy is in the audience right here. Uh, out of these people, three of them have earned their PhDs. They have already published their work in uh, top plant science journals. Uh, Phytologence is already creating jobs, has created jobs in, in this area, and is providing uh, internship opportunities to PhDs and undergrads currently at WSU. So the company is already giving back to the community. Most importantly, this company is integrated with the tree fruit industry, and we are talking to many people in the forestry industry, citrus industry, nut industry, to develop these processes and deploy them today and not wait for two or three decades in that process. So from this journey, what we've learned is that technology can bring about a transformation. It has to be simple, scalable, and sustainable. But wait a minute, there is one ingredient missing in this equation. Can anyone guess what that is? It's the students. Students are the seeds of the future, who we need to engage today to solve our problems if we want to maintain a healthy planet. And in fact, we work in an environment where we have that luxury, that opportunity,
to integrate students in our day-to-day -day research and solve some real problems. And as we are all working together in contributing to uh, solving the problems of the future or seeding this future, I share a thought with you that inspires me on a daily basis. Thank you very much.